Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Chris Fabry, Director of Solutions Architects and Customer Advocacy at Synergis. I've been in this business for well over 30 years and I've been with Synergis for 16 of those. We're really excited to share with you the value ADEPT provides and to answer any questions that you may have. Now, just a little bit about Synergis. Synergis at we at Centers have been developing, implementing, and supporting engineering document management solutions for more than 26 years. Our flagship product, Synergist Adept, helps companies find, manage, share, and control engineering and business content throughout the life cycle of a project, product, or facility. More than 70,000 users worldwide benefit from Adept across a variety of industry sectors. Our customers range from process manufacturers to utilities, mining and metals, oil and gas, engineering and construction contractors, discrete or industrial manufacturers, those with buildings and facilities to manage, and pharmaceuticals, just to name a few. Our flagship engineering document management solution is Synergis Adept. The simplicity of Adept is key. Dr. Joel Orr of Scion Research called it simple power, and we think that says it's says it all. It's an enterprise solution that's incredibly easy to implement, use, and maintain, offering unmatched time to value and ROI. Here's a closer look at some of the utilities we work with as our customers. They include, they're included in here are investor-owned electric cooperatives and municipal or po public power utilities with locations throughout North America and some even beyond. In today's presentation, we'll be discussing the top five challenges that our customers tell us they're facing in today's uncertain economic environment. Many of the, these challenges have become more complex than ever, largely due to the pressures of organizational and energy models. The increased need to secure capital assets against outside threats, the need to comply with stricter government regulations all bounded by an added loss of key tribal knowledge uh, as longtime staff retires. And given these challenges, it's more important than ever to gain control and secure access over all of your engineering and maintenance assets and information. The problem is the faster that it's become overwhelming for most utilities to manage. Uh, according to a recent paper from Utility Dive, uh, 2017 State of the Electric Utility the five top challenges we've identified are among the top 10 ranked in their survey. But before we make a, any assumption about you or our audience, we'd like to know which of these challenges is truly most important to you folks to solve in the short term. So I'm going to launch a, a quick poll here, and we'll see if we can get this on the screen for you folks to answer. And I'll give you a, a few seconds here to choose these are multiple choice so pick all that apply to you for some of you it's it's going to be more about how to just mitigate that risk for some it might be just finding and sharing and managing the files uh, we've got a few selections on secure critical assets and prevent loss of tribal knowledge has become a, a, a real important one for many of our customers as well. And we'll talk a little bit about compliance with some of the different government and local regulations. All right, just a few more seconds and then we'll wrap this up. All right, it looks like our center three are the biggest ones, how to find, manage, and share drawings, how to secure critical assets, and how to prevent loss of tribal knowledge. This is definitely something we're seeing quite a bit of, and we're absolutely going to be covering these today. So let's go a little bit deeper into some customers that use um, different, will use different case studies to illustrate the ways in which utilities have taken action to overcome these top challenges. First off, is we're going to start talking about Hoosier Energy Cooperative in Bloomington, Indiana. Hoosier Energy is a generation and transmission cooperative that provides wholesale electric power and services to its 18 membership distribution co-ops. For 
Hoosier Energy, searchability and version control of engineering and design documents were key drivers to help mitigate the utility's risk of power outages. Under the utility's uh, previous Windows Explorer-based system, it was difficult and time-consuming to search through the massive amounts of drawings and engineering data. Plus, someone could have two different versions of the same drawing that got released, which wasted time, money, and delayed projects. The confusion over which file was the correct version caused difficulties with staff and contractors alike. Uh, according to the substation design manager, some comical things have gone on too, where you would have two different versions of the same document go out, and one contractor would pull out a piece of conduit, and another would go back and put it back in. Then another contractor comes in the next day and pulls it back out. While this sounds a little comedic, there's a real serious threat if the wrong version of a drawing is pulled to perform a repair. Because the utilities are relying, uh, relaying work is very meticulous, everything has to be done absolutely right. If someone used an incorrect version, one errant wire could cause a contact to have an open and close, which could then dump out an entire substation. Thousands of people could be without power. Using a document management system ensures accurate version control, so there's only one version of the truth. Next, we'll take a look at Midwest Public Utility. Um, they needed to get it, their paper-based legacy data more accessible to it, their engineering departments and field crews. The big push was to eliminate the three million paper documents and get them into a searchable database. Some of their buildings are approaching 100 years old. They're Engineers frequently access drawings of buried underground utilities that were installed 50, 70, 80 years ago. That information was invaluable if they could get it into their if they could get their hands on it, and the Synergist Adept system made that possible. Also, with a large retiring workforce, it was imperative to get their tribal knowledge gathered in a single repository. New employees had no idea which documents existed or where to begin looking. Having ADEPT as the virtual storeroom for all design and infrastructure documents will help both new and future employees discover and benefit from the richness of that legacy data. South Carolina Gas, uh, excuse me, South Carolina Electric and Gas is a regulated public utility and principal subsidiary of SCANA, Corp Scana Corporation. SCENG generates, transmits, distributes and sells electricity to over half a million customers in 24 countries, counties and provides natural gas to customers in 36 counties. With the implementation of ADEPT in the transmission group and substation sitting, siting group, the utility now has the ability to index folders and search for documents by different types of metadata rather than just by file name or date, which is most common in Windows Explorer. They can search for substation documents by name, number, work, access time, ten, any field they want. Later in the demo, you're going to see some of the advanced searching capabilities that they use, including smart file guides, which lets users search by project file type and extension or any combination of search criteria. ADEPT has enabled them to store and maintain their legacy records while providing help with revision control, communication, and collaboration among teams. The utility also uses ADEPT in its purchasing process because everything it buys generally needs a drawing or a specification. With ADEPT, the transmission team can find all the documentation needed to support a requisition, which may include 50 or more items such as transformers, breakers, relays, and switches. With ADEPT, they can find all the specifications and all the structures and send them directly to purchasing. What used to take two or three days is now taking about an hour. ADEPT is also helping Turlock Irrigation District Water and Power in California to meet the requirements of several regulatory agencies at the federal, regional, and state level. FERC, NERC, uh, WORK, there's a bunch of them. And in California, uh, 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 California ISO is uh, Casio. Uh, these require that all drawing revisions be maintained for 50 years after a license expires, which means that data retention and security are a must. Not only are documents secure against everyday events like accidental deletion, but they're secure against purposeful malice as well. 
In addition to these requirements, as a public utility, Turlock is committed to keeping rates low. This places a burden on them to get their work done with minimal staff at a time when California's economy is expanding. This means they have to work uh, to do with less people. They have more work to do with less people. Now, a comprehensive uh, document management system like Synergist Adept can help utility companies of all sizes and types better manage their drawings. Waste less time searching for drawings, capture tribal knowledge of long-term employees, keep documents secure as required by government agencies, and get important information into the hands of those who need it. Synergist Adept enables increased productivity and efficiency in daily operations, a real huge boon to the bottom line of any organization. Now, let's take a look at how Adept can help solve some of these challenges. We're going to start off in Adept Desktop, and then we'll talk a little bit about the web client a little bit later. So whether you're in design mode, searching for drawings, uh, in in the office or out in the field performing maintenance and searching for manuals or as-built design documents, finding the right file and the right version is critical. Now one method of searching an ADEPT is using your ADEPT search card. This enables you to search using one or multiple pieces of information that you know about your documents. So in this example, I happen to know the site location is, is Alton. And if I want to narrow that down, I got a list here. If I want to narrow that down, I can also add a secondary piece of information. In this case, I only want to see the electrical documents. And now I see a shorter list. Uh, all of this information, if I turn on a, a different column set here, I can see several fields. And now we know that it's only uh, electrical documents. So every document that is placed in ADEPT under ADEPT's care will have a data card associated with it. And every customer of ours has a unique looking data card. They get to design this. It's a real simple drag and drop interface. In my example here, I've got several different field types. Some of them come with ADEPT right out of the box. You just drag and drop them or decide whether you want to use them or not. Other fields you can create and customize on your own. Place them where you would like. Some of these might be extraction fields where the information is actually coming from the document itself. In this case, it happens to be attributes within an AutoCAD uh, drawing title block, but it could just as easily be a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, other file types like Inventor, SolidWorks, Key Creator, and many others have properties that also can be linked. So people don't have to fill that information in twice. They just type it in the document place the document under ADEPT's care, and ADEPT will place that information in the proper fields. Some of the information might be from pull-downs. Uh, we also have uh, related fields that are very, very useful in drilling down information. For example, here I've selected Pennsylvania as the state, and my option for cities was uh, Pottstown, uh, uh, and it had a, a Berwick and Quakertown. But if I change that information and pick a different state or a different location, then it clears out the fields and gives me other options to choose from. So the idea is very straightforward. The selection of one field narrows the options for the next, which then could er narrow the options for the next, and so on and so on. Very, very useful uh, ability. I've got some other tabs for some other document types. I have a memo field where people can type in notes to each other, even insert images. And then finally, a thumbnail. Now, this card with these fields and this layout were really organized for one particular group. I had a, a specific group of, of designers in mind. Um, but as you guys know, in the utilities industry, you're going to have very diverse groups or stakeholders or different roles. And they may not be looking at the same information about that document. For example, I may decide that my project managers really need to see something a little bit different. These are the fields that they're most concerned with. Some tabs might have exactly the same information. Some tabs might have completely unique information for them to see that others don't need to see. The idea is very straightforward. Give people what they need and only what they need rather than creating one data card that has everything that everybody needs to see. And it ends up being as big as your whole screen. Now, I'm going to close this card and we're going to look at a couple other ways of searching. Um, let's say I just know one piece of information, part of the file name. I can type in part of the file name 
uh, LAY. Here's a list of every file that I have in the system that begins with LAY. Very, very quick. But if the majority of the time, let's say 90% of the time, if you don't know file name, if instead you know the site name, you can choose that. So this is a very quick way of searching for a document based on a piece of information that you know. We also have the ability to do full text search. This comes in really handy if somebody is possibly out in the field or even just looking at a printout of a document. They may not know the file name, but if they can see a specific word and they can type that in. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this here. Oops, let me try that one more time. It wants to type in more. I was doing some other more complex searches earlier. You can see you can use Boolean searching in there. So here I've just located every file in the system that I have access to that has the word initial somewhere in the document. It doesn't have to be an attribute or a property. It doesn't have to be in the data card. It just has to be text inside of that file. And that works on a lot of file types, but not all. For example, that will not work on photographs or JPEGs or bitmaps. Um, for that, you're going to need some uh, full text searching capabilities that will do OCR on the documents before they, they come into a depth for those photographs. Another method for using all this data to locate documents is called the file guide view. So this leverages all the data that's in your data cards. And ADEPT, this is a very unique and logical way for everyone to browse to their documents in a way that makes sense to them. This looks like a file folder tree structure, but really it's a data structure. It's a combination of your data. I've asked ADEPT to show me all the files that I have access to, but organize them by their project name first. So I can click on a project name and see every file for that project, even though these might be stored in all different folders on our server. Now, if I want to narrow that down, the next level in this example is the discipline. So if I only want to see electrical, I've now given it two pieces of information and it narrowed down the list. If I wanted to go a step further, I could pick a file format and that would narrow it down even further. So this might be perfect for one group of users. They might love to see the files this way, possibly the designers. But let's say I'm the project manager. I might want to see them organized by their workflow status instead. Show me all the files that are going through a review process in the design review workflow. And if I want to narrow that down, I can say just show me the ones that are on the project manager's step of that workflow process. That's the one I'm most concerned with. And yet another group may say, no, I'd like to see them organized by their site name first. And then after we go to the site name, then I'd like to see a project number and then a discipline. They're finding the same files. They're just sorting them in a way that means something to them. And you folks will get to create these different file guide views. These are just my examples. Typically when we help our customers roll Adept out, we'll ask each of the groups, what are the two or three things that you always know about your documents when you're looking for them? And whatever their answer is, typically that's going to make a great file guide view, a great way for them two or three mouse clicks to get to the files that they want. Now, there's also one called Library Browser. This is your folder structure when ADEPT is put in place. So for everybody that was used to going to the old J drive and then going to a design folder and drilling their way down through subfolders and more subfolders, they can still do that. The same structure is replicated right here in the library browser view. Also down here you may notice that we found, I'm going to go back to the file guide because I prefer that one. Um, <clears throat> when you search for files in ADEPT, you only find the latest version, period. That's it. It's only when you've got that file selected and you look down here in the document dashboard that you can see older versions. ADEPT keeps track of a new version anytime somebody checks a file out, makes changes to it, and checks it back in. That'll be a new version. Now you may notice I've also got a field called revision. Many of our customers will use their own field called revision because they like to link that to the attribute in their revision title block. And that way they can bump up the revision when they decide it's time. An example of this is, uh, this is ver uh, revision 5. I might sign it out, work on it for a little bit, and then it's Friday afternoon. I just want to put it back on the server. I'll put it back in. That'll be 6, but it might not be time 
to update to the new revision yet. I might check it out three more times, but I want to go back to one of those, or maybe there's three or four people working on the same project, and we want to keep track of each of those. So this versions tab will keep track of those automatically for you. ADEPT also has a children's tab. Anytime you select a parent document, and that's what that square symbol means at the top, is that it has children, and the small portion of a square or the L shape means that it's a child file, it has parents. Really those are just there to give you a, a quick idea of, hey, there's some relationships. And this is something you can't see with Windows folders. So immediately, just by clicking on this, I can see a listing of its children, and if I want I can look at a listing of its children and their children's children and all the way down, regardless of how many references you have in your designs. Now. ADEPT is able to read these relationships natively from the CAD file format. This also goes for Inventor and SolidWorks and MicroStation and Key Creator and others. Um, so you don't have to create these relationships. We read them right from the file and display them right here. This is also useful if I'm going to edit this drawing, I can say where you use so I know other files that I'm going to affect by editing this. Again, this is not something that you can see in Windows folder structure. Now, uh, also down here at the bottom, we've got an audit trail. Now, we talked a little bit about uh, different regulations that have to be complied to. This audit trail is extremely useful for complying with different audits or regulations. It keeps track of everything that happens to the files in ADEPT. If somebody views it, if they print it, if they copy it, if they check it out, check it in, approve it, reject it, email it to somebody, it's all kept track of right in this audit trail. So this is all searchable and reportable information. Very, very useful for those, for those uh, regulations. Also down here, we've got a thumbnail view. I see a lot of people leaving that on, so they get a quick peek at the file. Some of those are green. They're not showing up very brightly, um, but you get the idea. But that is just a quick peek at the file. Integrated with every license of ADEPT is a visualization tool from Oracle that enables all of our users to view hundreds and hundreds of file formats without requiring that hardware, or excuse me, that software on their system. Uh, so I don't need a license of AutoCAD just to be able to view this file. I'm able to zoom in and out. Uh, I can see any information. I can turn different layers on and off. I don't have any editing rights to the document. I'm just able to consume the document. And because of our integration in this viewer, this is very unique, you can also control what people are doing when they're viewing. For example, I may give one group the rights to view this file and print it and mark it up, as well as save copies, whereas another group of people, I might only allow them to view it and mark it up. These might be grayed out for a specific group. So our granular integration with the viewer enables you to really lock down so people aren't doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, the markup tools, you've probably seen different markup tools over the years. Very simple and straightforward. If I decide I want to make a comment on this, I can just put in a leader and text that's extremely big so you can see it. And I'm going to request to delete transformer. And as you can see, I can't talk and type at the same time. But this keeps track of who made that comment. So if Sandy comes in 10 minutes later and says, oh, we, need, oh, we also need a draft symbol on there, don't forget that in case somebody prints it, it'll keep track of who is making each of those comments. A real big benefit of this markup ability is that ADEPT manages it for you. When I exit out of here, it asks if I want to save that information, but I don't have to save it as a separate file. It's actually saved as data associated with that particular version. So if anybody views it in the ADEPT viewer, ADEP will automatically overlay the red line information, so it's not editing the file. But everybody involved is able to see those markups. Now, for some of our customers, when they want changes to be made to documents, they'll actually go through a formal process of creating a new document, like a new change notice or a new uh, change request. You can place all of your templates in ADEPT. 
to be able to create new documents. There's also an auto naming feature. So if you select a specific file format, you can say I would like to have a naming convention based on what I pick from this list. It'll add that information and dash and then the next available number. This is just one example of a naming convention. You folks can design your own. But the idea is to create unique file names so you're not creating duplicate files all over. Now, an informal method of doing this is just to simply right click and assign it. In this case, I'm going to assign this change to Adam for him to do the work. If you wish, email notification can be turned on so that when a file gets assigned to somebody, an email goes to them with a small link in the email. Rather than having copies of the file being emailed around, it just sends a link and when somebody clicks on that link, it'll bring them to Adept, ask them to log in, and then bring them right to that document or group of documents. If I had assigned Adam 150 files, he would have gotten one email with one link that would bring him to a list of 150 files. But the key here is the security to that. If Adam forwarded that email on to somebody else that shouldn't have access to those files, the link does them no good because it brings them to their login screen and they'll have to have access to the files in order to get to them. Now, at this point, I may decide I'm ready to, to make some changes. I can just simply right click to check it out. Uh, I can also just drag and drop it to my work area to check out the file. Now an ADEPT work area is really just your own personal folder. Um, you can decide where you would like that work area folder to be. Uh, for some administrators, you may decide you want to put that in a certain location. Um, uh, some customers want it on their local hard drive. Some of them want their work areas to be on a network drive. Uh, the benefit of the work area being on the network drive is that if uh, Adam or Chris wins the lottery and they're not coming back to work, somebody can go to that folder, uh, a manager, and hand it off to somebody else so they can keep working on it. But when a file is checked out, no matter how somebody goes about finding that file, they'll see in bright red that that file is currently signed out to somebody. And you can't have two people checking out the exact same file and editing it at the exact same time. You can have people working on components of it all at the same time and even uh, uh, working in a shared work area. But what you don't want is two people trying to edit it at the exact same time. Now, I could have also located that from within AutoCAD. Let's take a peek at what this looks from a designer's aspect. Right within AutoCAD, we have a task pane integration that has all the same searching ability that you just saw earlier. I've got my file guide views so I can sort my documents. I can perform searches on specific fields and each user can pick and choose what fields they want to use to locate their files. I can see the thumbnail, the relationship information so I know, hey, if I'm about to edit this, are any of these currently signed out? Is anybody else working on any of those other components? If so, I might want to give them a call and see if they're almost done. Uh, if not, that's fine. I can still work on this higher level while they're working on lower levels. And then over here I can decide the action. Now I've already checked this out, so I've only got open here, but had I not checked it out, if I pick a different drawing here, you can see my options will, will alter. Now I can decide if I want to open it read only, or if I want to check it out, or even copy it to create a brand new design based off of it. Now this one I've already checked out, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and drag and drop this file and all the action for when you locate files uh, in the task pane is drag and drop. Uh, in fact, I'm going to close this piece here. There we go. All right, so I just simply drag and drop. Now, Adept knows that that file had many X references and it's loading them all up in the background for me. So I don't have to go and find all of those. Everything gets loaded up into the screen, and now I can make my changes. I can also use this task pane to go and look for other details. Uh, maybe I have some uh, uh, blocks that I want to drag and drop in. All of that is done right from the ADEPT task pane. So if this is a block I want to use, rather than opening it, I can choose the uh, insert or attach command. And if I choose to insert it, it's just a continuation of the regular insertion command. In this case, I'm not looking to redefine that block, so I'm going to say no. Now, I'm going to make a really, really simple change here. I'm going to just zoom into this area. I'm going to switch over to model space, and I'm going to 
see if I can erase a group of items in here. Did I switch to model? I did, All right? And I'll hit enter. And let's jump back. So I'm just going to delete that just so that we can see a, an obvious change. So, um, so I've made a quick change to this. At this point, I also may decide to update the revision, or maybe I'm going to come back and work on a little bit more. Um, but the idea of the adept task pane is really to give designers of AutoCAD or Inventor or SOLIDWORKS the ability to search and locate those documents right while they're inside of the CAD application. Very, very fast way to get to the files and still know what's happening with those. Now, I could check in this file right from here. There's uh, actually quite a bit of uh, commands that you can do um, right from within the task pane. I can look at the data card. I can view the file so I can see those markups that were created. Uh, I can check it back in here, or I can search for all the children or where use, I even rename if, I, if necessary. Now, for the sake of this demonstration here, I'm going to switch back to the desktop, and I'm going to check it in from here. Now, when you check in files from, uh, from ADEPT, you'll notice that this particular folder or library has a little red check mark. All that means is there's a workflow associated with that particular uh, library. So any new documents as well as any new versions of existing documents that go in may begin a workflow process. And part of this might be to send an email to the first group. Again, providing a small link rather than copies, letting them know that this file has been put into the design review workflow. It's on this step of the process. Come and take, come and take care of it or, or review it. Uh, this notification is not required. It's an option. Uh, there's also the ADEPT inbox. So anytime a file needs your attention, it shows up in your ADEPT inbox. Here are all the files that have been assigned to Adam all the files that Adam needs to review, more I can look at them all together at once. So in this case, if I look down in the workflow tab, I can see where it is in the process and where it still has to go before it completes the process and becomes the new official version. Next, let's take a look at security and a little bit about disaster recovery. So right from within this single window is where you can set up access rights. This is where you can also point ADEPT to batch import your groups of documents, your folders and, and files. Um, it's really important to note, though, that ADEPT does not scramble, move, encrypt, or embed your documents inside of a database. If you have other systems and applications that need access to those files, they're going to find them in the exact same location. The latest version will always be in the same place with the same file name all the time. Granted, users, you want to come through ADEPT to get to those files so that there's a record of all the actions that are happening to it. So with a combination of ADEPT's unique vaulting plus ADEPT's ability to replicate your files, you've got a real solid foundation for a disaster recovery plan. And this is a key part of complying with different regulations. The security is very, very straightforward. So the different groups will have different levels of access rights. And this is where you can say, OK, I want this group to have rights, but I don't want them to have too many rights. Uh, I can give them the rights to view, edit, take part in workflows, or even do document management level things like move and rename files. In this example, it's a vendor that we're working with. I want them to be able to view, but uh, I, they're not going to be making changes. So don't allow them to save copies. Don't allow them to make prints. Let them view, markup, and assign it back to one of our people to do those changes. And any combination of, of these access rights can be given. All right. Next, um, let's transition to see how some users can actually make changes without desktop software. They can use the web client. So ADEPT has two web clients, one called ADEPT Reviewer and ADEPT Explorer. The idea is really straightforward that you have users that really just need to consume some documents. Right on this home page, there's some quick links to bring them right to some of their favorites, uh, some of their saved searches that they've uh, already saved themselves or other people have shared with them. So they can click on a link and it will bring them right to the files. Uh, at the top, we can search all fields in, 
in the library card, so just typing it in once, it'll search all the fields. You don't have to pick which field you want to search. Or you can use the library browser that we talked about earlier, the actual folder structure. There's also the file guides that we talked about earlier to be able to sort the documents. In this case, I want to sort based on the site and the project. And then uh, discipline. So I've located it this way. Uh, up here at the top, I can decide if I want to look at the data card, uh, view the file, or if I want to uh, up, uh, download a copy of it. And the viewer works the same way as in the desktop. Uh, I'm able to go in and view, zoom in and out, and whatever my access rights give me the rights to do up here. You'll also notice a watermark. Um, Adept has the ability to set up watermarks based on the status. Right now, this file is awaiting approval. It was going through a workflow. So if anybody prints it, I want them to know that. Uh, if this was currently signed out to Chris and he was editing it, the watermark may say something like, currently being edited by Chris Fabry on this date and this time. Uh, and here too, they can participate in the markups. If they want to add some other comments, uh, it'll log that they've made those comments in here. So a great place to be able to review your changes that you've requested, as well as look for any others that accidentally got made. Now, in this example, I may m make some markups. I can also assign this to an individual. Maybe I made some other comments and wanted them to make a little more, uh, uh, make a few more changes to it. Uh, this, too, will now assign that file to Adam, which could kick him off an email notification. So depending on the different roles, users have the ability to assign documents to other users, take part in workflow process to approve or reject documents. Adept's web clients really give client, uh, people uh, quick, easy, and secure access to the documents and provide the platform for your diverse teams to collaborate and communicate no matter where their location is. All right, with that, I'm going to switch back to our PowerPoint. So our customers tell us that Synergist Adept solves the top most pressing problems in utilities. And here are some next steps to consider after you leave today's webinar. First, if you're ready to go deeper with Adept, we suggest you call to speak with an account manager. You can join us for the nine essentials of document management success on July 11th at 2 p.m., which you can join by copying the link that's in the chat pane. In addition, we recommend that you take the time to uh, view the handout that we've made available in the GoToWebinar control panel called Robust Document Management Helps Utilities Keep Pace in a Challenging Market. It'll help you justify the investment very easily. We also recommend that you visit our Demo and Resource Center to view over 40 videos, 20 articles, and white papers at SynergistSoftware.com. And don't forget to check out our blog, which has over 60 great articles that address trends and topics about engineering document management industry. Now we're going to take some questions. You can type in yours in the question and answer box in the GoToWebinar window. All right, let me open this up here. And the first question we have is, uh, how is ADEPT licensed? Um, ADEPT is actually licensed in a concurrent or floating license manner. For example, you may purchase two desktops and 10 web clients, but you might have 10 people that use the desktop and 50 people that use the web clients. Essentially, it's how many people can be in at one point in time. Uh, this is really useful, especially if your organization uh, has different time zones or works different shifts. Those licenses are usable at different times, so you're not constantly adding licenses for no good reason. All right, let's see here. Uh, how easy is it to implement the software? What's involved? Um, we've got a team of people that help you implement ADEPT. Typically, we're talking just a couple weeks. I mean, it does depend on the size of your organization. Much larger organizations that are uh, in multiple continents around the globe take a little bit longer than a local implementation in a smaller group. But most of our, our implementations are just a matter of a couple weeks. Uh, 
Um, we are there to help you through that process and help you lay out the plan and the approach. This is something that we do uh, all the time, all over the world. We've got a team of, of uh, uh, application engineers that that's all they do is travel around the globe doing this. Another question is, uh, how is it supported? Um, ADEPT is actually supported by us. We have a support staff right in our Pennsylvania location. They are uh, just a matter of feet away from our development staff. So this is a US-based organization. Uh, all of us are here in the US. I don't think we have any uh, anybody that lives outside of the US right now. Um, so we do support it. Uh, we are the folks that will help you implement it. Um, a lot of our customers really like the idea that uh, we are a one-stop shop um, in that we are ultimately responsible. It's not something we're going to pass off on somebody else. Uh, also, our support group is extraordinary, and I know a lot of people want to say that about their support staff, but we have won some really nice awards. Uh, and if you get a chance to talk with some of our existing customers, uh, I know you're going to hear uh, very similar raving reviews of our support staff. All right, any other questions? I think that's it. All right, on behalf of everyone at Synergist Software, thank you folks very, very much for spending your time with us today. We hope it was useful. Please, we've got a lot more to share with you. Contact us when you're ready. Thank you and have a great day.